Yo, what's up, guys? I am, yes, Young Boba Fett, here on the other side of the force with the R2 builders. You are watching how to build a R2 ATL kit. Follow along and hopefully your R2 comes out just like mine. Okay, so here's how you assemble your R2 ATL below the dome drive. You see, I've got a couple of different parts here. You've got the uh, wheel with the groove in it for where your tire goes on. You've got the motor and the motor mount. And uh, the first thing you probably want to do is attach the motor to the motor mount. So you'll be using these shorter screws here. These are about one centimeter long. And then uh, these are the motor mount screws. And they're chosen for to be a particular length just so that they will screw yeah, into the uh, uh, screw into the motor mount and allow it to be attached. Generally, you'll want to attach it with uh, this way around so that the motor shaft is towards the uh, smoother side here. And then the next part you'll want to do is put on the pin for the screw for the spring. So there's the uh, long screw for the spring. You'll use one of your quarter 20 nuts to attach that. And then the dome uh, tension spring goes on there. And that just kind of hangs on there because you're going to probably want to adjust that a bit once you get it onto the frame. The next thing is the bushing uh, for the main rotation. That goes in there. Should pretty much just fit right in. And then here, this is the arm to attach to your frame. You would drill two holes into these two holes here. That, uh, you drill two holes in your frame, or they may match up with the holes already on jag frames. And you're going to use the shoulder screw. goes through the top of the motor mount, through the larger rounded part on the, the frame side of the mount. Actually, I forgot a piece. First put on this little PTFE washer here and then your motor mount plate, and then the flanged quarter 20 nut goes on there. And that should give you a nice smooth motion there. This one's a little loose because I didn't tighten it all the way. There we go, now it's nice and tight. Nice smooth motion, not a lot of play. And then you'd be attaching the hub to the wheel. For that, you will use these longer 440 screws. You can see a little better there. These have a different threading than the ones that you used on the motor mount. These are metric, the ones on the motor mount. These are uh, American you know, style, imperial. These will go through the wheel, and they will thread into the hub itself. And then that holds the hub onto the wheel. Hopefully you can see that kind of there. These will protrude through the back side. And the reason for that is because uh, the spacing between your frame plate and the motor mount may differ depending on how thick the top plate of your frame is. If you have a wooden frame, it'll be a half inch thick or three quarters inch thick or something like that. If you have a aluminum frame, it might only be an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch, and you may need more or less spacing between the wheel and this hub. And this extra length allows you to place some spacers in there and still use these same screws. Generally, they won't interfere too much with the rotation of the mechanism, but if you find that there's some rubbing or something like that, you can, of course, always cut them down to length with some clippers or pliers. Next thing you want to do, so you probably want to attach this to your frame, but let's just ignore that part for a moment. And you're going to want to put the, the motor wheel onto the shaft. See, there's a flat side on the shaft, and you want to line up the flat side with the two uh, grub screws that are in the hub. So you want to line that up like that, and you will use this very tiny Allen key that will come with your kit on both of these little grub screws, and you tighten them up on there. And then that will be nice and tight on the motor shaft, and you can see when you spin it that the motor will turn the gears with it. And then the last bit is your tire. You have this nice silicone o-ring and then just snap it into the little groove there and your motor mount kit is complete. The last thing that you would do is find a suitable spot on your frame for the pin for the other end of your dome drive spring, your tension spring. And then this would just provide tension 
stretch like that to keep uh, the wheel solid against the, uh, the rock they're bearing. That's it. I hope you enjoy your dome drive.